Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2018 Subaru Outback, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver. But before we get into that, why don't we just take a minute, check this out, and make sure it's gonna be the right one for you. Putting a trailer hitch on an Outback uh, makes sense. You know, it looks right at home. And that honestly holds true for just about anything you put on here, uh, accessory-wise, from roof boxes to bike racks to, uh, you know, if you're hooked up to a trailer and so on. And so if it were me, uh, I'd want a hitch that would be able to do just about anything you throw at it. And this one here is going to allow you to do just that. Uh, and that's really in part due to the clearances that it's going to give us, so where the hitch is going to be positioned, as well as some of the capacities and what it's going to be able to handle. This is going to be a class 3 hitch that has a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. Super common size, a ton of different things are going to work with it. It is going to use the standard 5 8 pin and clip. A pin and clip doesn't come with it. Not really a big deal if you need one, you can grab it here at E-Trailer. Or a lot of times if you end up picking up a new accessory, uh, one will come with it. So just uh, look out for that. The safety chain openings are going to be a loop style and give us more than enough space to use pretty much any size hook that our trailer might have on it. The hitch is going to have some good weight capacities. As a matter of fact, it's right on par uh, with all the other Class 3 hitches available. With that said, it's going to have a 600 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So that's the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. And you'll be able to use just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you'd want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 4,000 pounds or the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. I do always like to suggest so it's never a bad idea just to grab your Subaru's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure that your Outback can pull that much weight safely. Earlier I did talk about the good clearance that the hitch gives us and what I mean by that is it sits up a little tighter against the bumper compared to some of the other ones which it gets it higher off the ground as well as the receiver tube opening coming out pretty much flush with our bumper. Maybe even just a little bit past it honestly. So um, a lot of folding accessories and things like that are going to work out a little bit better. But be on the safe side, we'll take a couple of measurements uh, and, and kind of go from there. So from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 15 inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer around, chances are pretty good. A lot of you can use a ball mount that has a slight rise in it. For example, this one here, this is what our neighbors could use. It has a one inch rise and we'll set it uh, just about just about where it needs to be. So that's always an option. And if we go from the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that looks like it's gonna be about two inches. And you can use that to figure out exactly if those folding accessories can be stored upright without hitting the back bumper. And with that uh, amount of clearance there, you really shouldn't have to worry about running into any issues as far as that goes. Compared to some of the other hitches available, because there are quite a few, um, personally, I would go with something like this, uh, one that is less visible, uh, like this one here, being that you can only see the receiver tube opening, I think it looks a little bit better than some of the other ones that are completely visible and hang down. Uh, I particularly like this one because the finish, it's a matte black finish, and I feel like it matches our uh, bumper plastic good and kind of puts off the most uh, factory look but that's just my opinion you know there's ones that are glossy and semi-gloss and everything else so uh, you can always uh, grab whatever one you think looks the best if that's if that's what you're going for in terms of the installation the fascia does have to come off but honestly don't don't really let that scare you away you know Subaru makes it pretty easy and even compared to the other ones that where you don't have to take the fascia off with those it's almost more work to get underneath there and drill and do all that kind of thing as opposed to just getting this popped off and you have a ton of space to work and it's it's really accessible so not a huge difference there um, but like i said subaru makes it easy a couple fasteners all pretty easy to get to this pops out of the way and hitch kind of just bolts up so really shouldn't run into too many issues but if you'd like to see how that's done feel free to follow along we'll go ahead pull into the garage and put it on together now to begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our Subaru and we're going to have to remove our fascia. Uh, so to start with that, we'll first get our taillights out. So there's going to be a plastic cover here with a couple of fasteners that we need to pop out. Here's those fasteners. So it's a, uh, a Phillips head screw, but these are plastic. And you just take your screwdriver and just very lightly turn it. 
until you get the center of it to kind of release. And then once it does, you can take a flathead and just kind of pull that out. Do the same thing for this one. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of our car, we're going to do to the other side as well because it'll be set up the same way. But to get this plastic piece off, you can take your flathead and just very carefully kind of pry in behind it here. You don't take much effort, so don't get too carried away there. This will pop off. You can get that out of the way. Then that will expose two fasteners actually holding our tail light in. So you can use a Phillips or a 10 millimeter socket. It'll work a little bit better. We'll get them removed. We should be able to grab our light carefully kind of work it and pull it back and then we're going to disconnect it. So in our case, looks like we have this connector here, squeeze in on the tab, pull it out and then these bulbs are just quarter turns. So rotate it about a quarter turn, it'll pop out and we can move our light out of the way. So now just below where our tail light was, we're going to have this cap and we can pry that out. So very carefully, Take a screwdriver, just pry that open, and that will expose another fastener. Again, you can use a 10 or a Phillips screwdriver to pull that out. Now if you move to your rear wheel well liner along this edge, there's going to be several fasteners. One will be up here in the corner, and you can take a small flat head and you push in on the center of it, and then and carefully kind of pry behind the head of it until that pops out. And you can set it up for reinstall later. You just take the base, push it all the way forward. And then when we go to put this in, you just push that in and click that down. So that's how that one works. And if you move along down here, we're going to have several more. I've noticed in the past uh, these Subarus are all kind of set up a little different. In our case, we have mud flaps here, some don't. Uh, regardless, pretty much any fastener you see along through here, you're going to have to take out, uh, just from my experience. So, uh, with ours, though, looks like we'll have three Phillips head screws. and get them out. Now underneath the vehicle, there's another push pin fastener here. And we'll just pry that one out. And then if we kind of move our mud flap down, I don't think I'm gonna take the mud flap off completely. But if we uh, kind of separate it from the fascia, we should be good. But there will be another push pin there. And with these, uh, sometimes they just get so much dirt and junk built up inside of there. It makes them kind of, kind of tough to get out. So if that's the case, sometimes switching to a trim tool like this uh, helps out. Gives you a little more leverage there to, to pry that out. And then right in front of that, we're gonna have another push pin. Then if we work our way to the center of our vehicle, we'll have three more push pin fasteners. And the same deal with these, same technique to, uh, to get them out. Now with the next set of hands, we can get our face removed. I did put some painter's tape along the seams here just so we don't scratch anything. And if you want, um, I've noticed in the past, if you spray soapy water in between the seam, sometimes it helps kind of lubricate it. Uh, I didn't do that today, but it is something you can do. But you want to start at the corner and just start to kind of work it free. And these Subarus come apart really easy uh, for the most part. But then once you get up to here, that one came right off. I did spray this area down because it's a little bit tighter. 
But sometimes what you'll have to do is take a, a tool and kind of just very lightly kind of pry up on that while you're pulling out. That seems to happen occasionally. But worked it about the same. May or may not have wiring. It looks like in our case over on the driver's side there is a connector we need to undo. Here's that connector. Just push down on the center of it and pull outward and that'll separate it. And then with our fascia now free, we can set it off to the side somewhere out of the way. The fascia out of the way now, we can take off this little foam piece on our bumper beam, get that out of the way. And then that'll allow us to have access to the four nuts uh, securing each side of our bumper beam. So here's our bolts. Like I said, we're gonna have four, one in each corner. It's a 14 millimeter socket. And take these off. And for the top two, if you use a long extension, you can actually run it through the bumper beam. Once that final one is off, I already got the ones on the other side removed. We can get our bumper beam uh, out of the way. Something that I do want to mention, ours doesn't have it, but some of these will have almost like a, a small tab that comes out and kind of protrudes past the bulkhead here. Um, if that's your situation, you can take a hammer and just kind of tap it flat. That way when we put our hitch and everything back on, uh, that little tab won't interfere with it. But like I said, ours doesn't have it, so we don't need to worry about it. And with that all sorted, I'm get ready to get everything back on. So how this is gonna work, you can lay your hitch flat and the bumper beam will go on top of it. The holes in the bumper beam are gonna line up with the holes in the hitch. Then we can grab this whole assembly like this and slide it back into place. I'll grab an extra set of hands here and this will just slide right back on. Get it lined up. We're just gonna take that original hardware that we removed and get these all started uh, hand tight. With all the hardware in place and in tight, and come back with our 14 millimeter and snug everything down. When I do this, I kind of like to make an X pattern uh, just to kind of draw everything in evenly. And at this point, we need to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in our instructions. From there I went ahead, just put our foam piece back on and now we can move over to our fascia to where we can work on that, get it trimmed and start to reinstall it. To trim our bumper, uh, there's a diagram in the instructions that you can follow and I drew that out. Make sure you don't have nothing behind here of importance, you know. Um, and this is pretty thin plastic. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool just to kind of speed things up. But you could probably use a utility knife and score it and cut it out or a pair of snips, uh, whatever you got. But uh, with that said, I'll go ahead and get this trimmed out. With this trimmed out, we can get our bumper put back on. So don't forget to uh, plug your electrical connector back in over there. And we'll carefully just slide this back into position and resecure it the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at in our installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on our 2018 Subaru Outback Wagon.